With insects in water, there's another adaptation that allows them to survive. We have an insect in water, and some insects use bubbles in order to supply their tracheal system with oxygen. An insect will go up to the surface, grab a water bubble, and then I'll draw it much larger here, hold that water bubble, and I'm drawing a very simple insect. I'll erase a couple of the legs so that I can draw a water bubble here. And that water bubble is pressed up against the opening of a spiracle. So let's look at what happens to the insect. So I'll just draw one spiracle with some branches here. What happens in the insect, the water, and the bubble? But we start off at a partial pressure equivalent between the water and the bubble and the insect when it's been up at the surface. I'll draw in percentages. The partial pressures are equal. But 160 partial pressure of oxygen per millimeter of mercury. And I'll stop drawing all of these. I'll just use the numbers here. 160 for oxygen. We're at about 600 for nitrogen. And very small for carbon dioxide. Less than one for CO2. In here also 600 and two less than one CO2, 160, 600, less than one. As the insect uses oxygen, this number drops. Carbon dioxide starts to build up. And so carbon dioxide goes one, two, three, and up. However, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide outside the bubble in the water nearby is low. Carbon dioxide easily escapes and we have a relatively constant low level of carbon dioxide in the bubble, a little higher than the background of one, and so we're always having a net loss of carbon dioxide. So this part is great. We are successfully excreting CO2, even though the insect is underwater and its tracheal system can't work underwater, it would be flooded. What about oxygen? The oxygen is being used, so oxygen from the bubble moves into the tracheal system, we're now at 140, that's higher than the partial pressure of oxygen outside the insect, so oxygen moves into the bubble. Notice what we've done here. We have a large gas exchange surface replenishing the oxygen that's going into the tracheal system of the insect. The gas exchange surface is now this entire bubble, and in principle, an insect could survive indefinitely underwater with this bubble. But there's one other thing we haven't considered yet, which is the nitrogen. It may seem as though our insect can hold that bubble forever, but the problem is this. With the removal of some of that oxygen, the total pressure is actually going down. Oxygen is going down, carbon dioxide is constantly leaving into the water around it. So the total pressure is going down and the proportion of the gas that is nitrogen is now higher. As the bubble shrinks, the oxygen is removed. Water pressure then makes that bubble shrink a little bit. Now the nitrogen is perhaps at 620 and that means nitrogen is leaving. Let's run through that again for each of the gases. So carbon dioxide is being produced, moves down its partial pressure gradient or gas tension gradient into the tracheal system, out down its partial pressure gradient into the bubble, and relatively quickly leaves and is excreted. Oxygen is being moved into cells and used where it's converted to carbon dioxide. So oxygen moves into the tracheal system because the partial pressure is lower in the bubble. Oxygen moves from the water into the bubble. That's great, we're feeding oxygen to the insect. However, because some oxygen is being lost, our bubble shrinks just a little bit. Oxygen is being removed, but that means that the total amount of nitrogen is actually going from 600 to something higher. I called it 620, and it's 600 millimeters of mercury outside. Therefore, nitrogen leaves. So oxygen is removed converted to carbon dioxide, which moves into the water. The bubble shrinks. Nitrogen is in higher concentration. Leaves, that means the bubble shrinks even faster. The bubble shrinks and shrinks and eventually needs to be replaced. It gets too small for enough gas exchange to take place and needs to be replaced. 
Turns out there is a way for insects to hold that bubble forever. Some insects have a different system. Instead of having a bubble, they have a series of hydrophobic hairs. Much smaller than this, but to sketch it, I'll do it this way, and we'll have spiracular openings underneath these hydrophobic hairs. Remember, hydrophobic means they don't interact well with water. When they go up to a surface, they get an air bubble held along the sides of these hydrophobic hairs, and the water never gets closer than the ends of these hairs. Under these circumstances, we have an insect that can hold water indefinitely. We'll go through the same series of points here. Oxygen is being used by cells to make carbon dioxide. Therefore, therefore oxygen is moving into the tracheal system. Therefore, it's moving from the water into the bubble. Carbon dioxide is following the reverse path, moving into the air and then out. Nitrogen is, in fact, leaving. The same problem is happening that as the oxygen is removed, the pressure goes down. Nitrogen is leaving. So we wind up with negative pressure inside the air layer, but it cannot collapse. The hydrophobic hairs keep it from collapsing. And so this can go on indefinitely. Insects with this type of system can stay underwater indefinitely.